Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to RyanCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer, conversation, and the spoken word with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1 669 664 6491. And make a difference. Good night, everyone. Welcome to Making a Difference. I'm your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. And thank you for joining us again. This another edition, this another evening, where we can go through the scriptures, wherever you have joined us from, whatever device you're on, and if you're logged on live, whether you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, or whatever device. We want to welcome you to this another edition and we thank you for joining us tonight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this yet another opportunity. Hearts, God, are grateful in gratitude because God, you have allowed us another opportunity, another moment where with God we can declare your word through the earwaves and we thank you for this medium we thank you god for this opportunity oh god as we gather tonight god open the ears of your hearers and touch their hearts so that they can be attentive i thank you and i bless you in jesus name amen and amen well tonight as promised last week that we will close this evening's edition by talking about prayer. So this is our final installation on the matter of priesthood. We would have spent uh, a lot of time looking at the aspect of priesthood. And um, tonight we will conclude tonight. Now, our, our text tonight, I just want to make reference to them as we proceed. We are going to be reflecting on Genesis chapter 49, 5 to 7, where Jacob declared his blessing. Jacob declared his blessing upon his children in his old age. And uh, we are paying particular attention to his blessing, to his prayer, sorry, his declaration over Reuben. Let Reuben, uh, sorry, his declaration over Reuben his declaration over Simeon, and his declaration over Levi. So that's what we are focusing on. And then our cross-reference is in Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 6 to 11, where Moses now, as they would have finished the wilderness, about to cross over before he died, he would have again stood up and made prayers and declaration over the tribe of Israel. And in that, he also mentioned Reuben and Levi, but he did not mention Simeon. Our focus is not so much on Simeon and Levi, but on Reuben. And then we are going to use another scripture, uh, 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1. And this is Elijah the Tishbite. And um, we are going to go over to the next chapter, chapter 18, verse 42 to 45. But that's what we are going to look at tonight. Uh, we are going to take a break. When we come back, we will go into these scriptures and we'll go into the last edition of prayer. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be right back. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to RyanCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer conversation and the spoken word with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1-869-664-6491 and make a difference. Thank you very much for being a part. Thank you very much for joining with us tonight. So we continue. Uh, we look now at our topic tonight, since this is our last, our topic is shifting seasons. And we are talking about priesthood, the platform of priesthood. We would have spent um, the last few editions talking about priesthood. Now, prayer is the 
infrastructure for connecting essentially to God. Prayer is an infrastructure. Prayer allows us to relate with God, to interact with God, and to come into an atmosphere where his lightness, his ambience, and his aura is formed in us. Through prayer, we are brought into a, uh, we are connected to a frequency that allows for the transmission of spiritual waves from the council of heaven um, down to us and we experience divine encounters. Almost every day of our lives, we interact with the realm of the spirit. We interact through dreams, through vision, through many forms, but we interact with the realm of the spirit. And prayer is one of the transmission through which we, we, we interact with the realm of the spirit and we have several encounters through prayer. Prayer then, as we have come to appreciate, is vital and prayer is also important. In one of his books, E.M. Bounds, e. Bounds, Bounds penned the title of one of his books, The Essentials in Prayer. That means prayer is a fundamental element inherent in a believer's life and ministry. It is the economy of the kingdom of God. So said Pastor Dr. David Og Bueli. And um, he drew a similarity. This is now Dr. Og Bueli. He says, in our government system, taxes are collected as internal revenues. And in turn, the government provide amenities for the nation. In God's system of government, our prayers are collected as revenues. You see the similarities. So our prayers become the income generated or the value recorded and deposited to our account. So if we fail to give God the revenue that we have, that means we have shortened his intervention. We have shortened him from providing the necessary uh, needed amenities, that which we need so that we can be helped. Remember that prayer is calling on God. It is asking God. It is giving him permission to legally act on our behalf. So as E.M. E. Boone says, it is earthly permission for heavenly intervention. I'm building my case. I'm building my case. I'm building my case. With that said, then prayer then is a technology that as believers having been exposed to this technology, we can take advantage of it. What is a technology? A technology is uh, the practical use of scientific knowledge and principles. And we know that prayer is a science. We know that the use of altars is a science. By the way, when we, from next edition, we will go into altars. So t technology is the practical use of scientific knowledge and principles. It is the application of knowledge. This is another part of technology. It is the application of knowledge to achieve a goal or to solve problems. And this comes from Google. So technology is a mechanism that reduces your physical output, but yet at the same time, it improves your human life. This is what prayer is. This is prayer. It improves our human life. This is prayer. We apply knowledge to uh, achieve our goals and to solve problems. This is prayer. We use knowledge and principles practically to get what we want. Let us continue. In the Greek, technology comes from the word technologia, a technologia. Now, this word, it, this word technology, a technologia, 
is derived from two words. One, techni, which is the art and craft, which is art and craft. That is, that is the ability to express or exercise creatively with skills that which you have imagined. Uh, 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 it is also uh, used to produce, to produce, to produce, or to exercise uh, 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 that which you work with, uh, what which you're working with, um, that which you have devised. So you are actually producing um, uh, given workings of that which you have imagined, that which you have derived. So that's the word tech. That's the word techni. That's the word techni. So we can create the climate we want. We can shape the day we want. We can, as we see it, with the skills in praying, we can use the principles of prayer and get it done. Now we come to the second word. The second word you realize is logia. Uh, logia. Logia comes from the word logos. And logos actually denotes thoughts or the expression of thought, the expression of inward thoughts. So that is why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he because you are your thoughts. You, you cannot be separated from your thoughts and what you express, what you speak out are your thoughts. So then as believers, Priesthood gives us a platform called prayer in which our thoughts, when uttered, when expressed outwardly, when, when creatively expressed, can shape the world around us. My God, my God. Prayer is a platform. It's a technology that can close and open doors. My God, this is getting somewhere. It can change climates. It can shift and change seasons. Uh, 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 if it is maximized and done correctly, things can turn in our favor the moment we have prayed. You know, there are some doors that have locks and you need a key physically. There are some doors that need a password. There are some doors that need fingerprint. There are some doors that need voice. I mean, I mean, there are some doors that need the eyes. The eye just need to pass through the data system and the door is open. But I am talking about getting these doors removed without without manual lock and without without these data passing through fingers and eyes and doors i am i'm talking about using prayers to break down doors my god i'm talking about praying and and the doors will lift up there are some times that doors cannot swing open they have to be lifted they have to be lifted up and that's what prayer does. You, you know, when the children of Israel were going into Jericho, Jericho was shut up. They could not go in. There was no way of going in except the keys from heaven would have handed to them. And so the, the science of prayer, the technology used, the art, the creativeness of God, giving them the instructions to walk around, walk around. And while they were walking around, this, listen, the host of heaven, the host of the armies of Israel were in the atmosphere and they were destroying principalities and powers. And while they were marching around and following the instructions God was working on the foundation of the wall day by day going all around and in obedience in obedience when they gave that shout of praise bless God hallelujah when that shout rocketed in the atmosphere my God my God when the frequency went through the airwaves my God, every principality and power, everything had to let loose. The power of the voice of the 
people of God, my God, shook the very foundation of the Jericho wall and brought it down. The power of priesthood, the power of prayer as a technology. We have the creativeness. We can create, we can form our world around us. We can speak the word and things uh, appear as if the word. That's what we have at our advantage. That's what we have at our arsenal, the power, the effectual, fervent power of prayer can move anything. That's what prayer does. My God. People have different instruments. People have different means by which they get things. But by the word of God, by the power of the living Christ, when we pray and we connect to the council of heaven, when we connect to the triunity of heaven, when we connect to the courts of heaven, I'm telling you, I am telling you, we are, we are inviting the triunity of heaven into our earthly business and he will act on our behalf and we thank god for this medium we thank god for this avenue we thank god for this platform because once maximized correctly my god we can shape our world the depth of our prayers can bring anything into alignment your children can come into alignment my god Oh, hallelujah. Not only your children, at your workplace. My God, order. Everything out of order can come in order. That which was not coming can come to you. The purposes of God can find their expression through prayer in your life. Prayer can bring gifted men and other destiny helpers to find you and to locate you because of prayer. My God, things that are shrouded in mystery can be revealed through prayer. Because I'm saying tonight, prayer is a technology. Prayer is a technology. And when we go into altars, you're going, we're going to see how a, an, an altar is scientific in its nature. And so if an altar is scientific, then, then prayer also is scientific but we are looking just now as, as at the technological aspect um the, the technological dimension of prayer my god my god the word the word the word the word logos the thought so so we now have to take our thoughts and put them into words my god that's why jesus told the disciples my god if you believe you can say to this mountain be thou be removed because your words have power words are spirit and words bring life words bring life words bring life listen let me tell us something tonight the spiritual realm deal with sound sound and whenever we speak, whenever we utter a word, sound precedes the words that you hear. So before you can hear the words that come out of someone's mouth, there is a sound. So everything is preceded by a sound. When God said, let there be light, you know, the, the, the sound of his voice, the the sound echoed through the atmosphere of time and it oscillated or it turned and turned and turned until light appeared. And so you got to think of, of, of your words. Your words are important. Your words have value. Your words have matter. You know, when we were growing up, we heard about sticks and stones could break my bones, but words can do me no harm. Words bring curses. Words also bring blessings. Words form and shape the climate in which we are in. You can stand.
stand up in your position and make declarations. You can stand up at your position and cancel things, nullify things. You can call things into your sphere of influence. You can pray people out of your sphere of influence. That's how powerful prayer is. God has given us a powerful tool. This is very powerful that we can pray and things happen. Listen, let me tell you something. When the children of darkness, those who are associated with Satan and his evil altar, when they send up their prayers of curses and blight, when they speak evil over people's life, they stand to see it come to pass. And they believe because words are powerful and words are their thoughts and so they tell them what to say and they come and they do their enchantment and they come and they do their bewitchment and they come and they set up and they begin to speak these things over communities over houses over streets over environment listen let me tell you our country is the way it is because of the evil words spoken over individual lives over community and over our territory and that's why you understand that people can sin individually and, and there's also territorial sin and for these things to be broken we have got to declare we've got to pray as a territory to break the territory curses and blight but we also got to pray individually to break that individual curses and blight we got to pray the blessings in and pray the curses out this is important this is important i want us to take this seriously tonight because what we are doing what we would have discussed over the past few weeks my god standing and priesthood standing and priesthood using it as a platform to change our world listen years ago years ago before i go on to my next step years ago somebody gave me this book by dr cindy trim commanding your morning i didn't understand all of it at the time but i used it a lot i used it a lot and by using it i realized that a lot of things began to, to take place and take shape in my life. Now, there's a difference when you use a book without understanding and when you use it with understanding. Now, I was saying these prayers without understanding because I didn't understand the power of prayer. I didn't understand the creativeness. I didn't understand. Now, I appreciate her writing, but I was just saying it and I was trying to say them prayerfully. Yes, I did it many times. I would have said these prayers and I would have seen results. But right now, you see, if I take up that book, the full results of those prayers will take effect in my life because I've come to understand priesthood. I come to understand the platform that has been given to us. I've come to understand and appreciate that prayer is a technology. I've come to understand and appreciate that I can shape my world, that I can shape the things around us. So many times I have left things to chance because there was a prophetic word over my head i said well since they prophesy well then it will come to pass never not up to now i now have to go back a lot of things i wrote down i now have to come back and pray those because all i said was lord well they say it and i come in alignment and i move on but i never furnish those prophecy with prayer i never watered those prophecies with prayer I just I just left them and I just move on. We have to do better than that. We have to do better than that. The children of this world, they follow through and whatever they have to do, they don't give up. They don't give up. But because we say, we say, well, we serve God and what is for me is for me. Oh, yes. Listen, let me tell you something tonight. I was promised a job in a particular place. God told me, God says, you, the job is yours if you put it in that context i went and i bought shoes i bought clothes and i cried out to god and then i left it do you know that someone else went and did whatever prayers they did whoever they went to because they know the people 
And today, I have never gotten the job. The shoe rotten. I had to wear the clothes elsewhere simply because I left it to chance. I just said, well, okay. Okay, well, it's mine. I went for the interview and I sat down home and I'm waiting, wait home for over a year, going on two years and nothing took place. Listen, let me tell you, you cannot leave things to chance. You cannot just say, oh, well, oh, well, my mother says she prefer me and it's coming and it's coming. You know how many times I'm waiting for things that have left one port to reach me? I did a study overseas. And when it was time for my certificate to come, you know how long it took for that certificate to come? I could have feel the tension. And I kept calling the register, calling the office, calling the dean, and keep, uh, you know, contending that I haven't seen this yet. And they said they sent it. They said they sent it. You know what happened? That thing went to St. Vincent. I got that thing like two and a half months after. And when I got it, it was the wrong name. My God. They sent another one. It was wrong. It was tied up somewhere in one of the states when I trace it. Listen, you know how I got my certificates? I went down in prayer and I prayed for each release. I prayed for it to come. I prayed and I prayed and listen, I prayed and I believe God. Listen, I creatively uttered the words in the atmosphere and the sound of my voice echo through the atmosphere my god and the earwaves heard my voice heard the sound of my voice and they had to release it i actually got the first i actually got the second one second because the, the first one came direct and the one that was tied up in i think it was indiana when it did reach it came after i said well i have to i still have them today because of leaving it to chance you can't leave things to chance i always say you are not the only sower you are not the only sower the bible says that the sower went out to sow and when he finished and went home another sower came you're not the only sower you're not the only person contending we are interacting with the spiritual realm on a daily basis this is not just because we have god god alone this is a just environment the enemy also is at work and when you think that things are just left to chance he will ensure that it left to chance he will hold it back as long as possible and let you get stress and pressure. You want to avoid the stress and the pressure. You've got to pray earnestly. You've got to keep the fire on the altar. The fire on the altar is prayer. You've got to keep praying. 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 They will only come to you as we keep praying. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to RyanCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer, conversation, and spoken word with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1869 664 64 91 and make a difference thank you very much for joining us thank you very much for tuning in welcome back to making a difference i'm your host pastor clyde williams now having spoken before the break about not leaving things to chance we now turn to our text and Jacob here, we're going to use Genesis 27 and Deuteronomy 33. Jacob, as he is a custom in those days, even now I think people still do that. Before one passes, one sits the family down and begin to talk. And in talking is not just words, but it's blessing. And they begin to instruct. And they begin to give guidance and they begin to bless their offspring so that the bloodline down to third and fourth generation would have these teachings and would be blessed. So these blessings go on and on and on. And Jacob is here blessing his children. And over Reuben, his firstborn, 
He says, because you defiled my bed, he says, you'll be unstable as water and you shall not excel. Now, now I agree that he would have been upset. I agree that what Reuben did, you know, by going into his father's bed was wrong. He, he should not have done that. He should not have done that. But then for all these years, Jacob has been carrying this hurt. And, he, and the hurt now is coming out because he's now telling Reuben, he's firstborn. He says, because you defiled my bed, you'll be unstable as water. You know what it is to tell someone that their bloodline would be unstable? And he says to him, you will not excel. You know what it is to tell your bloodline that you will not excel? And so he lived throughout this generation, throughout all these years. He died and his bloodline continued with this word over their head. You'll be unstable as water. You will not excel. So wherever they go, their children, their grandchildren, their great grand, it comes up upon them. You'll be unstable as water. You will not excel. You'll be unstable as water. You will not excel. Instability will be your portion. Everybody else will excel except you. Now Moses. Moses now is on the scene some 500 years later. Now, if we calculate, it, it is more than 500 because the children of Israel spent 430 years in Egypt. And then Moses at the time of his death was 120. So we can see that it is way past 500. But let's round it off. Some 500 years later, Moses now in Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 6, he says, let Reuben live and not die. Let not his, let not his thing be few. So listen, here comes a man of God standing and using the platform of priesthood. He's using the power of priesthood to change, to shift seasons in a bloodline. He's using priesthood to redirect a generation. That they were unstable as water and were not excelling. Now he's saying, let Reuben live and not die. Let not his numbers be few. So let them now multiply. Let them grow. Let them excel. Let them become great. Let them live. Let them live. Let them live. So, so the power of prayer is important. And that's why I say, I call this session shifting seasons. We've got the power to change seasons in our lives. We've got the power to change seasons in our lives. Listen, let me tell you tonight. I don't know what was said over your house. I don't know what was said over your bloodline. I, I said it some time ago that the Lord said to me that you are the priest. You have raised you up to be the priest of your father's bloodline. And I'm studying to see all the things that would have taken place in my father's bloodline things that have come down to us. I now stand as priesthood. God has given me the authority and the platform to change seasons in our lives, seasons of disease, seasons of failure, um, early death. My God, my God, the, the deformities, my God, the regular visit to doctors and so forth. Lord, not excelling academically, making sure businesses strive making sure that we become financially stable and financially great my god because we didn't grow up with money but now i have the ability to stand using the platform of priesthood and pray economic growth and prosperity in our bloodline having understood now the different illnesses in my father's bloodline i can nullify that which was there present and i can speak now health I can speak better health. I can speak strength. I can speak long life. Oh my God, what a privilege God has given us through this platform. We can command the old to end and new to come in. My God, we can, we can pray for refreshed, revive. We, we can pray for new things. Listen, we can order our day. We can order our week. 
we can order our month we can order our year we can order them from january to december and even though you ain't reached december yet they will wait until you get there so when you get to december that which you pray for will await you and you will get it in jesus name my god we've got the ability to 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 turn beauty for ashes strength for fear the oil of grace for mourning we joy can replace uh, tears there's a scientific nature in prayer and we can turn the things in our favor in jesus name we can do like jabez the bible says jabez was more honorable than his brothers he realized that his system, he was named, he was, the name represent his situation. Mm. But he said, listen, I've got the ability to shift my season. I've got the ability to change my circumstance. And the Bible says he prayed, oh God, that you will bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Strengthen my cord. Broaden my horizon. Let me not be a pain to anybody. And the Lord heard him my god may the lord hear us tonight may the lord hear you tonight may the lord bend down his ears and hear open his eyes and see may the lord have mercy and compassion upon you may the lord see you my god through the eyes of eternity that which was written of you you've got to come in the volume of that which was written of you and you've got to pray in accordance with what is written of you and reclaim that which has been stored and are stagnant that which you leave to chance you can now rise up in jesus name use the platform of priesthood use the technology of words create your world create your environment and call things my god as if they were right by you and even though they're not there when you get there it will be there for you so by tomorrow my god you praying it today and by tomorrow when you reach you reach your workplace it shall be there waiting for you somebody shall be there to greet you somebody shall be there to give you and whatever was missing you will see it and god will bring it to your mind so that you know how to capitalize on the situation and get exactly what you ask for god be praised hallelujah hallelujah let's now turn to elijah Let's now turn to Elijah. Elijah now is not an Israelite. He, he was from Tishbe. He was a Tishbite. He was from Tishbe. But he came over. He followed hard after the God of the Israelites. So we are introduced to him in 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1. And this is what he says, as the Lord God liveth before whom I stand. Listen, this is a strong declaring of the word. This is strong uttering. As the Lord God liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no rain until I say so. That is climate shifting. That is environmental shifting. That is change season shifting. That is the power that you have with words my god he used priesthood he stood firm in his faith and belief and he shifted the environmental condition he changed the climatic condition over israel for three and a half years for three and a half years listen and god honored what this man says so much that when he finished god said go down by the brook sheriff Listen, I've commanded a raven to feed you. And when the brook dried up, you know, when the brook dried, the Lord said, get up, arise, go thou to Zarephath. I have commanded a woman, a widow to feed you. My God, look at God when you stand to declare, when you stand to pronounce, when you stand to use words in the atmosphere, when they're picked up by the angels of God, when you're picked up by Holy Spirit, when, when, they, when they come up to God, a sweet aroma, I'm telling you, God is going to respond. When the heavens were opened, it was only because he went again and stood before God. The Bible says in chapter 18, 
that he bowed down his head between his knees. My God. And he said, Obadiah, he said, go and look, go and look, go and look. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. He said, I ain't see nothing. He went down, he prayed again. He said, go, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. And as he kept and he kept going, he said, he see my God. God, you see the sign, a cloud forming, my God. And he told Ahab, he said, when the place began to get darkened, he tell Ahab, listen, get thee up, get thee up, get thee up, get to Jezreel, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. I've come to tell us tonight that when we pray, listen, the heavens, the heavens will open up. There'll be a sound of abundance of rain. We've got the power to change season from dry to wet. We've got a, we've got the power to change our dry season we've got the power to change our condition that which was limited we can call on god he says call on me and i will answer see if i will not open the windows of heaven and bless you when you give me what i desire my god my god look at what nehemiah did when he reached back to judah when he reached back into jerusalem the bible says he walked the wall by himself he didn't let anybody know but he prayed he prayed he used a platform of priesthood and the lord carried him through even though the sambalat and tobiah and gosh and all those who didn't had no kingship to israel came up against him yet he stood up he stood up he stood up yes my god look at daniel look at daniel when the buchanazar needed answers when the buchan needed when the buchanazar needed answers it was daniel and his brethren who prayed and the lord gave them answers my god look at prayer look at prayer look at prayer my god when they were in the fiery furnace look at prayer prayer brought them out my god how could you be in fire and you not get burned my god how you could be in alliance then and you could sleep on them as pillow my god the power of prayer as a platform i've come to tell us tonight that we've got the ability to shift seasons we've got the ability to change circumstances and i have begun to use that which i'm telling you i have begun to do it i've begun to do it and i have seen evidence i am seeing evidence i'm seeing evidence and that's why i can come and tell you that it works and i'm going back to use now um dr cindy trim's book commanding your morning and i'm going to say it with my with understanding my god as a matter of fact i have begun to write my own commanding morning i've begun to write my own prayers because because things that i need to shift in my life things that need to change in my life they're not sis, um dr trim did not write about them but they are things that are in my life sit down and pen your own prayer pen your own words talk to god for yourself use the platform use the platform use the platform my god the spiritual realm deals with sound the spiritual realm deals with sound my god everything proceeds with a sound send the sound in the atmosphere my god elijah heard the sound he said there was a sound of abundance of rain. He heard the sound in the realm of the spirit. And that's why he was able to tell Ahab, gird up your loins, man. Listen, get ready. Rain is coming. My God. My God. The sound first and then the manifestation. My God. My God. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of the Syrian army with the two leprous men my god when they had the cans on their feet my god god allowed them to hear the sound of mighty armies coming together and they run leave all the food and all the stuff sound 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 oh my god hey, hey, hey. my god is good oh sound 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 my god at one time david was going to war and he prayed he prayed and the lord told him 
uh, when you hear the sound of the marching around the mulberry trees, then I want you to act. There's a sound. There's a sound. There's a sound of victory. There's a sound of victory. There's a sound of abundance of rain. There's a sound that is coming. I pray, I pray that you hear the sound. I pray that you pick up the sound. I, I pray you're at the frequency so you could hear the sound from heaven. You can hear the sound of marching armies coming to help you. You'll hear the sound of the abundance of rain. My God, open our ears. We can hear. Open our ears, oh God. Open our ears, oh God, so we can hear. My God, the sound. My God. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. My God, when the day of manifestation was come. When the day of full realization was come. My God, when that which was patterned in the Old Testament was about to have its fulfillment. The Bible says there was a sound. My God. God as a mighty rushing wind. I pray you hear the sound of the wind tonight. Let the sound penetrate your pocketbook. Let the sound penetrate your bank account. Let the sound penetrate your life, your account, your profession. Wherever you are, may you hear the sound of God. The sound of the wind of God coming to you. Oh my God. God, I pray for the sound of the alert that God is about to bless you. God is about to come to your rescue. My God, my God, hallelujah. Rabakasateh keseta. Oh, mighty God, Jesus, the sound, the sound, the sound. <laughs> The sound, somebody need to hear the sound tonight. Somebody ears need to open to the sound of God. Somebody need to hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Somebody need to hear the sound that the armies of God are, are coming to help you out. Somebody need to hear the sound of abundance of rain. Somebody need to hear the sound from heaven. The sound from heaven. God is about to change your circumstance. God is about to change your situation. God is about to turn things around. God is about to turn your morning into dancing. Oh my God, touch the ears of the hearers. Touch the inner ears so that they hear the sound in the realm of the spirit. Because God, they are about to experience it in the physical. It is about to manifest in their lives. Oh Lord God of heaven, I pray for the sound to be heard in the name of Jesus. My God, Father, I declare right now over myself, over my family, over this studio, over the management and directive of this studio. My God, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, our ears open spiritually, that God, our frequency become on high alert so that God, we're able to hear the sound from heaven as to God, where this program is going, the sound of heaven as to where this station is going, the sound of heaven as to what is the next move, the sound of heaven that my God will come as to Lord, the path to trod. My my God, I pray right now, God, that the abundance of rain fall upon the studio. The abundance of rain fall upon management. The abundance of rain fall upon this program. Oh God, I pray for the sound of the abundance of rain. The sound, the sound will come and we will be alert and we will hear. My God, our ears will be opened. My God, we'll be attentive and we'll be alert and we'll act accordingly in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God again over this studio, my God, over this station, over its operation, over every programming, day by day, night after night, I pray for the sound of a wind. My God, Pentecost came, everything was fully realized. I pray for a full realization of the dream, of the vision, of the concept of that which God you have given Brother Weeks, that which you deposited in his spirit. My God, I pray for a sound now, come from heaven and 
push him God to the next level in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I pray for the sound to be heard my God my God my God let a sound be heard let a sound be heard open his ears open his ears open his ears open his ears my God let the sound from heaven Come now in the name of Jesus. Ikalabaka Santa Laboke Sete. In the name of Jesus. I pray, mighty God. I pray, mighty God. I pray, mighty God. I pray, mighty God. For a sound, a sound, a sound, a sound. Let the sound ring out. Let the sound ring out. In the name of Jesus, my God, Father, I pray right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, over everyone tuning, everyone listening, everyone, God, whatever media they are on, whatever they're going through, whether the blockage or not, God, whatever it is, I pray for the sound. Everything is preceded by a sound. Let the sound be heard. Let the sound be heard. And let change come. Let the seasons be changed. My God, I thank you and I bless you. I bless you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to RyanCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer conversation and the spoken word with your host Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1869-664-6491 and make a difference. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host Pastor Clyde Williams. Welcome back to Making a Difference. As we wrap up this evening, my god something took place just now the sound of heaven i believe actually there was a sound coming there were persons all over who were listening and there was sound coming through they were hearing things were happening things were changing seasoning seasons were shifting uh blockages were being removed gates were being opened doors were being opened god was challenged channeling um answers down to individual even during that moment and i pray even now father that that people's ears will be open and hearts will be attentive and alert father we thank you for tonight we thank you we thank you oh god we thank you my god you have given us this technology we can use words and creatively form our world my god we can speak to situation we can call things as if they were we can command our morning my god my god hezekiah prayed lord remember what i have done remember how i worked and i labored for you and the lord sent back isaiah and said tell him i've added 15 more years to his life somebody's somebody's added years tonight this moment there are things that have been added a minute have been years could be money added to your account my god it could be your services being added whatever it is god is adding to you god is not a taker god is a giver and god is giving things right now god is depositing things right now god is creating environments and situations so that you can prosper so that you can walk now in in a different lane my god things can shift things can change with man it is impossible but with god all things are possible i've read many texts in the new testament and i've seen where people's lives were shifted dead were raised sick were healed i mean opportunities were granted those that were closed became open i mean that's who god is the poor man cried the um jesus the son of david have mercy on me that was his cry and he heard him and he healed him and he was able to see may the lord heal us in our sight tonight may we, may we be able to see and may the lord touch our ears so that we are able to hear the song from heaven and capitalize on it thank you thank you thank you 
wherever you are you are tuning tonight i want to thank you for tuning in i want to thank you for being a part of tonight's uh installment of making a difference i want to thank you for your continued prayers and if you are able to give please give towards the ministry please give towards um the work that we are doing here the information is always online the information is online the information is there you can capitalize on it you can always call the studio on whatsapp and arrange whatever you can arrange and speak to brother weeks but i pray that the lord bless you wherever you are good night from my heart to yours on behalf of management and staff of royal central praise and from my heart to yours to those who are tuning tonight wherever you are good night and god bless i'll see you next time wednesdays at 7 p.m log on to royalcentralpraiselive.com or youtube facebook at central praise skb for making a difference to prayer conversation and the spoken word with your host pastor clyde williams you can join us by making the call 1869 664 6491 and make a difference.